On January 14th, the morning of the 2018 National Championships, his final race, Jonathan Page sat down with Molly Cameron to talk about what he's doing now, the race itself, the future, and his ideas on the sport moving forward. How's the uh, assos? How do you pronounce assos? Assos. Ah, uh, not assos. Not assholes. Assos? How's that? That's great. Isn't that More cute? Professional. So. It's like being a bellman. Room uh, four of twenty. Is that your? Uh, so uh, is that your next step in your career? Your <laughs> no, that's just always been a step. It's a step. Uh, it's a way. You know, actually, I just got the email that so it's a way that we can pay for our kids to ski race. Is because is to work for Vail. Oh yeah. And uh, and we get the passes for right. uh, for the whole family. So what would you do? What do you, what do you well, mean? you'd work for Vail, but I mean, would you you'd be like... Uh, As part of being a Vail employee, you get the ski passes for uh, a reduced rate or for free. But what are you going to do for Vail? What am I going to do for Vail? Are you going to just answer the phone? I mean, hang no, no, out I'm be a, a bellman. I'm a bellman. You're going to hold the door? Yeah, I, I, I open oh, okay. a lot of doors. <laughs> Press the button. Sweet. All right. All right. Whatever. I'm Jonathan Page. I race for Kind Human Bicycles. Asos and Shimano. Yeah. Cliff Bar, it's all a personal sponsorship uh, program, and uh, Bliss, eyewear, and helmets. Sweet. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're here for the 2018 U.S. Cyclocross National Championship. Can you believe it? 92 was the first time I ever won I was gonna ask uh, the road title in Bloomington, Indiana. Did you win the pro road? No, no, no. Well, junior, 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 junior. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was 15, and I won the 17, 18 type. Crazy. Event. Yeah. So how many national titles do you have? I think it's nine. Yeah. Uh, four cyclocross titles? Four ones that count at the elite level. And yeah. then uh, every junior under 23, every time one or two at each age. Yeah. From in different disciplines. So is this the last professional race of your career? Or is this just your last US race? Are you doing, are you going to go to Europe after this? <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I haven't entertained any. I mean, I've entertained the thought and I've thought about it, but I, I don't. Uh, no. Yeah. The plan is no. This is it. So even if you win today, well, we can talk if that okay. happens. Yeah. Right. You're right. Okay. But I would do that more as a, a business trip than uh, as well as uh, a racing trip. Yeah. That's the next step. I mean, I don't know. There's nothing. It's very. It's an interesting, when you're finishing your career, there, I don't know if there's anything else out there that involves cycling. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be a bellman at uh, Vail? Sure. Let's we'll see what how that goes. Yeah. I'll be I the mean, garbage man. I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. You got to take care of your family, man. Mm -hmm. You have three kids? Four. Oh, I yeah. didn't know you had a four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Emma's 13, Milo's 10, and... Pearl is six. She's gonna be seven at the end of January, and then Ansel will be two on Tuesday, the sixteenth. Nice. Um, where are you guys living right now? Park City, Utah. Yeah, you're yeah. still okay. So, I think something that that I think about you and your career that, and this is just my perspective, but you're only as good as your last race. You've been, if not the single best, yeah. and best is a very loose term yeah yeah the single no, I, best u.s cyclocross male professional cyclocross racer in the last 10 to 15 years i mean you were the best when i started riding cross and you're still one of the best now but the thing that strikes me about jonathan page is i feel like the uh the saying you're only as good as your last result really for you is what i've seen um has been kind of a big piece of your career it's like people forget about you if you're not winning a race yeah. You're not, on, the, you're not on the radar. Exactly, and um, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard at the top, and it's not an easy. Uh, it's not an easy place to be, and people expect a lot out of you. And uh, Belgium, they're even worse yeah. than Americans. Yeah. For and sure. it's for sure you're only as good as your last race. Yeah, right. and so you know, <clears throat> coming into this race, I mentioned to you earlier yesterday, but everybody that we've interviewed this week 
every, almost every single one of them is like, don't count John and Paige out. And you said it, don't count anyone out. But a lot of people have a feeling you may just show up and wow everybody like you did in Madison a few yeah. years ago. I mean, yes, it can happen and it has happened in the past and it's fun. It's fun for me to play that game yeah. and that place of it. And it's also the, uh, the respect that people have for me is that's also very nice. I'll take that and that's put it true. in the pocket for, you know, for the rest of my life. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, sport loves having heroes and villains and I wouldn't say you're a villain. But yeah, I, I try not to be that. But I, I've been pinned a villain before. But it's not the. I just, I just ride my bike. I just, I just race. Yeah. Racing isn't always cheery and fun. You know, it's like you're out there, you're rubbing elbows, and that's racing. Stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's bike racing. I think that's something. You know, there's a different thing when you're an elite rider, even a regional elite rider, and you're taking the sport seriously, whether you're a male or female, you know. Yeah. And then you have everybody else, all the amateurs and the age groupers and, you know, like just folks that want to go out and ride their cross bike and do a race, you know, every weekend with their friends in the fall. And a lot of people think that the sport should just be fun. It's just fun. But then you kind of go to the top level and especially, particularly if you have experience racing in Europe, you know that, you know, you can have fun. You can, you know, when you're on a good day, yeah. having fun out there. Yeah. But for you, it's always, it's been a career. I mean, this has been your job. It's yeah. at work. I mean, you know, much, and I, I've noticed that over your career much more than anyone else. Your job is to win bike races and right. to race your bicycle. Yeah, you I, I kind of say that I'm the blue collar bike racer of uh, yeah. a, a bike race, you know, a blue collar worker of the bike cyclocross, of bike racing. Yeah, and yeah. it's crazy now because you can, you can uh, get on the internet and Instagram and Facebook and act crazy. Yeah, I'm right and up there. You know, but you know, you know, you did never really embrace that, and you let no, your racing do no. the talking. Yeah, well, it's to my dismay. I I don't really love social media. I think it's it's kind of silly, but it's a tool that the sponsors like, and uh, and I yeah. I can respect that, and I'll I'll work with it, and but um, it's something I need to get better at, and so it's or do like, you or do you in the yeah. twi in the twilight of your career? Do you? I. I said, I have jokingly said, if the first thing I would do is, is delete my Twitter and, if, and I like Instagram because I don't have to say anything. Yeah. Images say, images images say, say a lot of thousand, words. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. So if you don't ever see me up there anymore, then don't worry about it. Do you it. think Jonathan Page is going to just disappear after the race today? Uh, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all right. Yeah. I I'm mean, you've right got a family. Them. Yeah. And it I seems like you're really happy it. off the bike. Yeah, that's that, and that's my longevity in the sport is that I've been happy off the bike as well. Yeah, I mean, for sure. That's uh, I got the I got a great family, I got a great support system, and that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, I'm you know I'm really pretty sick of talking about myself, yeah. but the the people around me is really I, I like I said I'm just like the messenger. I'm just the guy that's riding the bike, but they're I'm just one person, but I'm not, and the whole. A whole community, a whole village. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I think those are the stories and the stuff that I'm interested in is, you know, you see the athletes and the racing is exciting and the results are cool mm -hmm. and everything. And But there's a world of people behind each individual athlete, you know? Yeah. I mean, whether you're a junior Devo kid or you're a professional. Yeah. yeah. There's um, the, the there's Frankie the McCormick's, there's the, yeah. the Frankie Van Hosenbroek, the, the Bob Downs, there's, yeah. you know, there's all these people that are very close to me and there there are very few that are close yeah and uh, you've kept your circle pretty tight yeah yeah i learned that from the belgians yeah it's true yeah it's i mean <laughs> as hard as it is but it's, it's true yeah. it's true i mean you know just as much as there's a lot of really good people in this sport that particularly in cyclocross that give a shit and want to give back and do cool stuff there's a bunch of people that'll take advantage of you and you know thank you for everything you're worth to better their project and it's, their ambitions yeah it's just like a can of dip they put you in and they spit you right out yeah yeah well we can uh talk just a little bit about the race i mean there's going to be other news outlets talking about your equipment and your tire pressure and the course and this and that um i mean you're here to win i know you're here to win you yeah don't, you don't show up to bike races not to win right i like uh, any any race i'm in i just did my first uh, nordic ski race and i tried to win that sucker too <laughs> how'd that go 
Oh, it was great, but I ended up not counting the laps correctly, so I did an extra extra training. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Don't it is worry. embarrassing. Yeah, it's we're fun. not gonna cut it. But yeah, but. that's fine. I'm cool with that. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think today? I no, mean, I think it's gonna be a down to the wire type yeah. of bike race. That's um, you're not winning let, unless you are. You know, I don't think you're the person that's going to win isn't going to know it until they hit that line yeah I, is what i think yeah. i mean everybody we've interviewed said the same thing i yeah. mean everybody's it's confident, just but... everybody's confidence <clears throat> but that's great and that's super but you don't know until that you have uh, crossed that line and i'm not saying that you're crossing the line like this either i'm saying you might be crossing the line yeah hands on the bar throwing yeah you know? hell yeah. yeah i'm excited uh, I'm excited to watch. It should be a really now. exciting bike race. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a shit show. Yeah, it's uh, gonna be. There's a lot of rocks getting churned up yeah. in that that new uh, new section mm -hmm. of the pro line. Yeah. Um. So we kind of already been talking about it a little bit, and I don't I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um. But man, you've been how long have you been racing cross for? I think 20, it's 26 years. 26 years. You you you're probably the the single person single u.s rider male or female that's been racing bikes the longest and i think even if you retire tomorrow i think for the next 10 years you'll still have a decade on anybody else that's racing right now it's possible so it's a lot of that's a lot of years to talk about but in a nutshell modern cross like contemporary cross you know the 10 or 15 u.s riders you're going to be racing that are really going to be challenging you tomorrow what do you think about u.s cross it's it's a lot to cover but Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to look back on close to 30 years of a career. You know, in the last five or 10 years, what do you like, not like, and what do you yeah. think about the future of the sport? Well, it's been growing. I mean, it's just the biggest discipline in for USA Cycling and things yeah. like that, and that's really cool and that's part of it. And I just don't think that without, I think that there are definitely steps that we need to take to, to get better, get European results, get... Uh, a team together that will train like the Europeans together and yeah. not a bunch of individuals just fighting against each other. I think you should take it and, and use the people that live around you and, and, and your support system and not riding behind a scooter, maybe riding with someone else that can talk, you know? Yeah, <laughs> for so, sure. Um, I, am kind of amazed at like the, the jumping or the of hurdles or hopping of hurdles yeah. and I don't particularly love the man-made step type of things but the I understand Belgian stairs yeah but yeah, yeah right Belgian stairs are not like this they're like that you know so um but with that said that you have to have some sort of different in this environment that I think in Europe you find you can't ride through things or you can't ride up things because it's just the way it is but here you have to make up some some different obstacles to make sure. it more difficult yeah and then uh i mean is that something you'd like to see maybe a usa actual usa cycling team or do you think you could get kind of a trade program like canada cross world or yeah, something i think bigger? you need something like this bigger or and or the national team together yeah taking a not looking at it for one or two years taking a, a kid that's 18 years old or a junior and, and we're okay we're gonna work with you for the next however many years then we'll see what we get yeah yeah uh, so one of the things the filmmaker wanted me to ask and it is a funny question to ask because I think you know for all intents and purposes you're gonna be done racing cross in 2018 um, but why do you do it why do you race cross because I still like it I still love it, and I still I love the challenge of of courses. I love the uh, I I really I still like the training, and and even though I'm older and smarter and wiser, uh, I still like that that edge and to find the the you know the the joy of working hard yeah. is uh, why I keep doing it. Sweet. Yeah. Well, shit, I don't know. If we can keep talking, I wanted to let you go and get back. <laughs> no, I got not much to do. You just sit around and wait for bike races. Yeah. That's, uh... Hey, on, an, on a side note, um, 
What do you do for a warm-up? I mean, you've been doing this 26 years. Like, yeah. you've taken some laps and you previewed the course. And I'm mm -hmm. sure at this point, I mean, you're a few hours from the start time. Yeah. You know what you're going to do for tire pressure and equipment and tire selection. But in that hour or two before the race, I mean, in a nutshell, what do you do? What's I go out, ride my bicycle. I don't like trainers. Yeah. And, uh, so you go ride, yeah. regardless of the weather. If it was snowing, would you just... Probably not. I yeah. think that's a difference. I, it depending on the situation, yeah. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, it's pretty simple. Do you do sprints up, or anything and yeah, some go efforts? Yeah, get a little effort and, yeah. and you show up sweaty. Yeah. What do you eat in the four hours before your bike race? Do you have like a pre-race meal or anything? Uh, today I'll eat oatmeal for, for lunch. Yeah. Something simple and yeah. then uh, Cliff Bar products like yeah. uh, a gel before the start, something like that and just keep it, keep your body topped up. Totally. Yeah. And like uh, Uli Mueller used to say to me, uh, a hungry tiger hunts better. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shit, man. I don't know. I'm not going to ask you the question I asked every other rider. I asked them who was their pick to win. And, of course, you know, outside of themselves, everybody kind of had yeah. somebody they had their eye on. I think it's going to be uh, it's, it's Hyde and Ordenblad. Yeah, I agree. I That's, think it's Hyde's race to lose. I think Ordenblad's yep. right there. Yep. And then I think there's... Eight there's to gonna ten other guys gonna that be, could win the there's race. gonna be me up there somewhere yeah, yeah. but it, it depends if I can make it to the finish you know that's yeah. Yeah. it's pretty simple stuff yeah uh, but there are no give me's out here because it's it's fast enough and there's rocks so yeah and it will be a tight race yeah it's gonna be interesting I think there's some luck with the rocks too there's yeah. been a lot of flats all week so yeah all right it's what they call a barn burner yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. You betcha. Ah, thanks. Oh, we got the who's back there? Uh, People. From junior kids causing trouble. <laughs> cool. Yeah, pull that off. I'll shut it all down. Thanks, man. You bet. Good luck. Thanks. I'll take that. I always take luck. Yeah, I was just gonna be crazy. I would say good luck, and people would be like, oh, no, no, good skill, and I'm like, uh, no, man, you gotta no, create you your own luck. Yeah, yeah. Luck is luck. Good, good. Uh,